Hi, Julie Powell here. I thought I would take you for just a walkthrough as opposed to a speed edit on this piece. This is um, Write Your Own Story. This is a composite that I did with uh, some of my own original photo um, plus some content um, from various other sources as well. So this is the final image. So I started off with a um, plain blank layer. So I then had a couple of um, forest images from Pixabay. I uh, don't know if you've used that, but you can get all sorts of images there that are um, royalty free. Um, so I used two different forest images and I, the top one I sort of warped it a bit so that it sort of fit. It's not perfect but because of the way the image was that didn't bother me. I then gave it a hue saturation layer to drop the saturation back quite a lot, um, especially on that top layer because um, I really didn't want it to be so, so bright. So that's my forest as my background. I then brought in the moon, um, which has just got a layer mask around it. Um, nothing terribly difficult there, so just a standard layer mask and just laid out all the black. Um, I also then put a bit of a glow behind it. And I come back in and I added a gradient map to the forest behind it um, and a curves layer just to darken it up and that's set to multiply at 76%. Then I came in and added the clock. The clock is a foxy squirrel content. Um, so are the hands. Um, the hands are set at normal at 75% but the clock is set at soft light at 37 so that it is quite transparent over the moon. I then added a glow which is just basically a big blob of white paint which I masked out what I didn't want and um, set that to 56%. Um, then I've also added a bit of a shadow down the bottom which was more for the book to sit on um, which is also another foxy squirrel um, extraction so I come in and I added the model so um, the original model image okay so that's the original image shot in studio um, and I've made a few changes and did things um, removed the strap on the wings so I took um, that image into Topaz, and Topaz impressions and did um, I think it was like a painting three or something like that on it um, but then it um, is too painterly for what I wanted so I brought it back to 25 so I could just sort of capture it a little bit more um, and I just did some um, a little bit of lighting on her just painting in with a soft brush set to soft light and that was just fixing a few things um, so of course obviously I popped in below her and put in a shadow I'm just going to get rid of that turn that layer mask back on um, so as you can see your hair's still a bit in eh, and things like that but I then come in and I did hair um, so these are just some um, Cindy Grunston hair stock images um, which I then brought in and I did if I turn that off you can see that they're quite different color um, so I tended to match the colour to my model um, Mel's hair colour um, and I did quite a few of those and I warped them um, and moved them around and all the rest of it to give her a lovely full head of hair. I did have to make sure that I removed it from where the bandages are around her face um, because otherwise if it was coming out here it wouldn't look realistic. Um, this one wasn't so bad I found she had hair behind there anyway 
So that was my model and her hair and the background. I then added the glow um, to the sword. I came in and with a blank layer with the polygonal lasso tool. Let me just turn that layer off for a minute. Gonna go in so you can sort of see what I'm doing a bit more. Okay, so I came in and went around the edge of the sword. Now when you see that little circle appear, that means that you've got a join there. So, oops. Okay, so what I then did was picking a really sort of bright aqua blue, just painted it in. It's only going to affect inside those, uh, the marching ant lines, so turn them off. Then come in here and go to Gaussian Blur. And I can set that up quite high. Pretty much to wherever you want to pop it in. And then if you set that to screen, that gives you quite a brilliant glow around the outside of it. So that's the original. I'll pop that one back on and I'll delete that one. So I found that it wasn't quite bright enough so I just duplicated that layer and put it in again and then I did it a third time. Um, even though the opacity is brought down um, I still wanted to just beef it up just a little bit more. Then I had the butterfly um, which is another foxy squirrel content. Um, which was already extracted so I didn't have to do that okay so what I did is come into the FX panel and go to blending modes and I added a drop shadow now these settings for what I did afterwards uh, really don't make any difference so you could sort of leave them there I also added an inner glow, which is probably a bit much. Um, I'm just going to drop. I mean, again, it doesn't really matter too much. I actually take that up there. So I'm just going to click OK. So that's without the settings, and that's with the settings. So what I did then was I come along and I create layers what it does is it creates a new layer for the drop shadow which you can then grab and move and add extra blur to it and things like that so that's what I did with the drop shadow so I moved it I blurred it just put a little bit of a Gaussian blur on it and I dropped the opacity it's still set on multiply then with the inner shadow or the inner glow I should say it's too bright there so again it applies it to above so I can move it around do whatever I want so what I did was I put a layer mask on and I removed it over everything and just kept it on the edge of the wings Because I didn't want it everywhere. Everywhere is too much. It doesn't look real. But if you just put it just on the edge of the wings where the light would come through, and I think there's a little bit just down here as well, um, then it's far more realistic. So that is the butterfly. C Control Alt Shift E um, merges it all onto a new layer. I can then come into topaz go into lens effects so there's all these really cool lens effects that you can get in here so what I did I went into the fog filter and I think I used fog 2 and applied that 
and then I did a ground fog which I think was three and applied that. I then went into the diffusion filter and put a moderate diffusion on here. Now it looks quite heavy and um, that's fine because I knew when I brought it back into here so there then what I did was I put a layer mask and I painted it off of my model the butterfly some bits of the book and even a little bit of my moon clock um, just so that I had the diffusion and the fog surrounding her then there was a dodge and burn layer um, what I did this time round was I did a, um, a curves layer which I brightened it up a little bit and painted in the highlights and I also did one where I brought the shadows down a little bit and I painted in all the shadows so that just brightened it up a little bit okay so I merged it all up on my um, a whole new layer um, which again you know control alt shift and E um, and was looking at sort of my finished image I guess um, and trying to or near finish, finished image and trying to decide what I wanted to change now I figured I really didn't like that butterfly being orange I wanted it to be blue so I did a hue saturation see how I can just change the color there um, I inverted it by hitting Control I and I only painted in the moth because that was a global change that hit the whole image um, and obviously changed the glow on the sword and everything and I didn't like that so I just wanted it on my moth or the butterfly whatever I then did a gradient map which is just a, a standard gradient map that you will find in Photoshop um, and I left that at normal on 25% um, so you can see how that shifts the whole tonal range into a cooler palette it was quite warm I then also added in just with a smoke brush um, some smoke down the bottom and just with a, a paintbrush um, just some smoke painted that in and I selected um, one of the colors in the image so that it all blended in um, using a texture from my soft watercolor set um, this one is teal I think so I put that in at soft light on 25% okay so just using the elliptical marquee tool I drew a circle out and if you hold the space bar you can move it while you adjust but as once you take your finger off the mouse it is locked in I then did a curves layer and I dropped it down that way go into alien skin exposure 3 um, I really do quite like the Polaroid filters um, the one that I used in this case was this slightly soft and yellow blur and um, it gives a lovely glow so that's be before and after it also um, changed all the tones and hues um, in the image again as well um, so I'm just going to drop back here so that's that one which I did bring it back to 79% I'm um, still at normal mode but I wanted some of the the base image to come through then with my smoke brush I painted on some more um, using a darker tone out of the image just to sort of give it a bit more of a vignette and bring the eyes through the image a bit more so thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed that bye for now